God, when we look at defence spending, Ukraine is a big one for the US at the moment. Are we seeing increasing pushback from US Republicans in particular over their support for Ukraine? Do you think Volodymyr Zelensky should be worried about the prospect of the Republicans winning the next US election? Could we see a real policy shift on that front if that's the outcome? I don't think so. Uh, I, I think four, five or six months ago, you saw much stronger voices of skepticism. Uh, I think there's a, a pretty strong consensus among, you know, at least the current Republican leadership in both the House and the Senate in support of Ukraine, and that's bipartisan both sides. So I, I'm not seeing a, a recent spike. Obviously, it all depends on how the war continues to go. It, the longer the situation on the ground appears to be a stalemate, the more difficult that support is to sustain. And that obviously has to be on President Zelensky's mind. It's probably part of, of, of President Putin's plan in Russia. In fact, if anything, the only thing that probably could save President Putin right now would be uh, you know, the successful re-election of Donald Trump. And that could change things. But again, we're quite a ways away from that. Um, uh, it's unclear as of yet. I just interviewed the Green Senator, David Shoebridge. He's over in Washington for that cross-party Australian delegation that's really pushing the case for Julian Assange not to end up being extradited to the United States. I know that you and I have discussed this in the past, Gordon, and you haven't sounded very convinced that there is a strong political will among the major parties in the United States to, to reverse the, the position on his future. Do you expect this cross-party delegation will have much of an impact? Well, before we talk about political will in the United States to reverse it, we have to talk about political will in Australia to ask for it. Uh, and so while there is a delegation there right now, this has not been the official position of our current government or our previous government. So neither the leaders of, of the coalition here in Australia, or the current opposition or the Labour Party have made this a priority issue or a request of the United States. And so right now the delegation is being met with some sympathetic voices, Senator Rand and, and, and some other congressmen who are interested but uh, to be honest, the numbers are small. I, I don't consider in the list of, of 10 priority issues facing Washington, D.C. today, I don't think it'd break the top 10, maybe not even the top 100. So as of yet, until this becomes a priority for Australia, I don't know that it becomes a real priority for the United States. OK, just finally, I wanted to get your thoughts on the former Prime Minister Scott Morrison's plans to head to Taiwan. It comes ahead of what we are expecting to be a visit by our Prime Minister Anthony Albanese to Beijing a bit later in the year. Is that a smart move for Mr Morrison to head there? Well, I think the former Prime Minister was very clear on his concern about Chinese action and his, his broader support for uh, the legitimate aspirations of the people of Taiwan. Uh, the, the People's Republic of China has always been particularly sensitive about sitting U.S. or Australian and Japanese, other international officials visiting Taiwan. Former prime ministers are giving a lot more leeway. Uh, former Prime Minister Tony Abbott visited Taiwan before, so I, I'm not overly concerned about the potential of having a former prime minister upset kind of ongoing diplomatic efforts of the current government. But it does highlight the fundamental challenge that our current government, our Prime Minister Albanese, will have if he does indeed get to Beijing before the end of the year, because there are ongoing concerns about Taiwan, about Hong Kong, about the Uyghurs, about Chinese economic coercion, which is unresolved, uh, and you know our desire to kind of celebrate the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China. So not an easy task uh, for either side, but I'm not overly concerned about a former prime minister's visit to Taiwan. That's pretty much par for the course.